The most sophisticated measuring tools of 5,000 years ago are basically just people's limbs, like a person's hand, arm, or foot. They weren't very precise, of course, but for all your ancient needs like building a house out of mud or a small wooden fence, they worked pretty well. The ancient Egyptians, for example, used something called the cubit, which was basically the length of a man's forearm. But they didn't just use anyone's forearm, they used the forearm of the pharaoh, and called this length the royal cubit. They then took this length, made a bunch of measuring rods, and distributed them to all the builders so everyone was using the same measurement to build things with. Things like cities and pyramids. Over the next 5,000 years, various other civilizations came up with all sorts of unique units of weights and measures. They tended to be based on pretty arbitrary metrics, like farming and the human body. Like the yard, for example, was originally the length around a man's waist. Or the pound, originally called the libra, was initially defined as exactly 5,076 English grains. The mile was defined as 1,000 paces of a Roman soldier. The gallon was equal to the volume of 8 pounds of wheat. The acre was the area that could be ploughed by a farmer in a single day. And the foot was the length of a foot. To make things even more confusing, laws around weights and measures varied from city to city. So you could be using one unit in one place, go a little ways down the road, and that same unit could be a completely different value. In France alone, there were 800 different units of measurement, and each one of those had hundreds of versions from place to place, meaning there were a total of 250,000 uniquely different units in just France. Measurement across Europe was a complete mess. That was until a tiny little thing called the French Revolution. At this time, the French were obsessed with two things, chopping people's heads off and completely reinventing the structure of society for the better. To do this, the revolutionaries formed a brand new governing body to discuss and vote on which aspects of society to keep and which to rip out and replace. And at some point they got onto the topic of measurements. Most of them agreed that having thousands of units, each with different arbitrary values from town to town, was pretty yeah. stupid. They realized that France needed a new standard of measurement, one that everyone could use, that's not based on some guy's body parts. So in 1790, they appointed a group of the nation's leading scientific thinkers to do that very thing, and after a year of thinking about it, they eventually settled on using a decimal-based system, because for some reason we count using tens. They called this new measurement the meter, from the Greek word metron, which basically just means measure. They defined the meter as exactly one ten millionth of this distance right here from the North Pole to the equator. The issue was that they didn't know what this giant distance was. They had an idea, but it wasn't very accurate. They needed a precise measurement. And that's where these two guys come in, Pierre McCain and Jean-Baptiste de Lambre. They were tasked with working out a shorter distance from the top to the bottom of France along a line cutting right through Paris. This measurement, along with some trigonometry, could then be used to calculate the full distance from the North Pole to the equator. They had this fancy tool called a repeating circle to measure the angle between two points. They used this to construct a zigzaggy line from the top to the bottom of France using a method known as triangulation. The project was split into two parts. De Lambre would tackle the northern section, McCain the southern, and then they would meet in Rodez. Though this little project was only supposed to take two years, it ended up taking almost seven. You would think this would be because the northern section was double the length of the southern, but it was actually because the southern section goes right through a mountain range and an uncharted area of Spain. Not to mention, they were both harassed constantly and were even jailed on multiple occasions because some of the locals thought they were up to no good. But finally, after years of trekking across the countryside, they completed it, calculating the meter as exactly 443.296 lines. Turns out McCain had actually made a small error to do with the latitude of a city or something, which meant that the meter came out 0.02% shorter than it should have been, which is why when you google the polar circumference of the earth in kilometers, it says 40,008, when it really should be a clean 40,000. McCain ended up not telling anybody this, as he thought public opinion around the adoption of the metric system was already super shaky. So this brand new, though slightly incorrect measurement, was then used to calculate the value for the kilogram. One kilo being equal to the mass of a cube of water with side lengths of 10 centimeters. Both of these metrics were then made into platinum prototypes and chucked into the French National Archives. And in December of that year, France made the metric system the sole system of weights and measures by law. The people of France still kind of wanted to use their local measurements, but eventually almost everyone moved to metric. A couple years later, in 1814, Portugal liked the idea of the metric system so much, they adopted it too. Then so did the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, Switzerland, Spain, Italy, Romania, Germany, and soon, thanks to our good friend colonialism, these European powers took the metric system global, and one by one countries all across the world began adopting this new system as their system. But there was an issue. As more countries adopted the meter, it became clear that it wasn't as perfect as people first thought. When these countries adopted the system, they also purchased standard meter bars that were intended to be equal in length to the prototype meter in the French National Archives. The trouble was that these bars were prone to wear and tear over time, especially on the ends, meaning from place to place the standard meter could be slightly different, which is exactly what they were trying to get away from. So it was then proposed that a new international standard meter be created, and in 1975 some countries got together, signed a treaty, and created the International Bureau of Weights and Measures to maintain a new global standard. 
This time they made the bar a little bigger and marked two lines at either end, and the distance between those two lines was to be the new meter, thereby avoiding any potential wear and tear on the ends. It was perfect, and everyone lived happily ever after. That was until 1960 when they decided to change everything again. Basically, the International Bureau of Weights and Measures had this idea, a vision for a single practical system of units of measurement that could be used by the scientific, technical and educational communities alike, consisting of six base units. The meter for length, the kilogram for mass, the second for time, the ampere for electric current, the degree Kelvin for temperature, and the candela for light intensity. They called it the International System of Units or SI for short. They also really hated the idea of physical standards, like the meter bar and the kilogram weight, and sought to somehow peg all these units to constants. What's a constant? Well, it's something in the universe that's unchanging, like the speed of light for example. Unlike a steel bar which over a long period of time would slowly erode, the distance light travels in a vacuum in a set amount of time will always be that same distance. So. The first unit they redefined was the meter, which they pegged to the speed of light. Then, in 1967, they redefined the second in terms of a frequency of radiation emitted by cesium-133. Then they actually decided to add one more unit to the list, the mole, which basically measures how many things are in a thing. The meter was then re-redefined in 1975 because they discovered a better, more convenient way of doing it. Calculating the meter is exactly the distance light travels in 299,792,458 of a second. Then in 1979 they redefined the candela, and quite a bit later in 2019 the final four, the kilogram, kelvin, ampere and mole were all pegged to constants. Finally, SI was complete, a perfect system of seven base units all pegged to fundamentals of the universe. Truly the holy grail of measurement. Pretty much the entire scientific world uses this system, as well as a lot of the professional world. But for the common folk, there are still a couple countries yet to fully go metric, and some that say they're metric but really cling to their old imperial beliefs. Anyway, that's where we're at now.